circumcision is illegal. I contend that male infant circumcision is probably already illegal in the United States of America. I believe that an executive uh, or an attorney general or uh, a prosecutor could make a, a very good case if he held in one hand the 1996 female genital mutilation law and in the other hand the equal protection clause of the Constitution uh, and made the case that the male child is in, in, entitled to the, the same protection afforded by the 1996 law and start prosecuting criminal cases accordingly. The same excuse may be possibly wielded in, in civil cases. But even if that is not the case, I would propose the curious case of Khalid Adem, who was an Ethiopian American who was the first person to be prosecuted and the first convicted for female genital mutilation in the United States. Uh, it was stemming from charges that he had personally excised his two-year-old daughter's clitoris with a pair of scissors. The conclusion of the case, on November 2nd, 2006, uh, he was arrested in 2003. The conviction came down on November 2nd, 2006. Adam was convicted of aggravated battery and cruelty to children. These are two specific charges, aggravated battery and cruel cruelty to children. Uh, he was sentenced to two terms of 15 years concurrent, the first 10 years to be served in prison and the remaining five on probation. Uh, he also received a fine of $5,000 with an additional $32 per month for a probation and supervision fee. Um, so I mean, these, these laws are not sex specific at all. There's nothing, nothing in them that is specific to the, the, the sex of the child. So I, I would imagine that any, you know, any, any prosecutor, um, you know, maybe not attorney general, but okay, some, some prosecutor that happens to, to, uh, work up the gall to, move forward on a case like this would have tools already at his disposal without having to go to the more extreme lengths of making a case that hasn't really been made yet, you know, regarding the Equal Protection Clause and the 1996 General Mutilation Law. He doesn't need that. All he needs are ordinary child abuse uh, statutes, and he could make a convincing case. In other news, there was a case in Britain... I'm looking at a Guardi uh, an article in theguardian.com. The article is The Law Will Not End Infant Circumcisions, But Education Just Might by Ali Fogg. But I dispute that title, by the way. That's a ridiculous title. Nobody would have argued that when we outlawed female circumcision. This is, a, you know, just a really weird argument I, I have heard before, you know. But the law won't end it. Only education. Well, well nobody... Nobody wrung their hands about that back when we outlawed female genital mutilation. Oh, gee, you know, somebody might violate the law. Well, then they get prosecuted. Anyway, uh, the Guardian article. Uh, in her ruling this week, the family court judge, Miss Justice Roberts, was quite clear that two boys at the center of her hearing could could be circumcised when the time was right. She was also quite quite clear that the time was not yet right. Quote, I am simply deferring that decision to the point where each of the boys themselves will make their individual choices once they have the maturity and insight to appreciate the consequences and longer-term effects of the decisions which they reach, unquote. Uh, the father of the boys, the father of the boys was Muslim and was, uh, apply, had applied for a court order to force the, uh, to have the boys circumcised against the will of the mother. Um, so apparently these boys are under state legal protection until such a time as they're of, uh, some level to be able to give informed consent, which, you know, I, I mean, nobody would choose this for themselves, uh, given the choice. Uh, this is an interesting case. It is not unique. Last year in Florida, a similar court case ruled the other way, obliging Heather Hieronymus, a mother, to surrender the care of her four-year-old boy chase Hieronymus to his father to arrange his circumcision. Yes, I'm aware of this case. This uh, this case ended horrendously. Uh, I it makes me physically ill to even think about it. Uh, it's the topic of another video. On the civil side of things, there's a, another interesting case. As you can probably imagine, courts have typically been unwilling to hear civil cases involving circumcision. Uh, except for cases where the, the damage is excessive, you know, beyond average, beyond the average case, which, I mean, to me is ridiculous. Every circumcision is botched, uh, in a manner of speaking, or rather they, they all involve an element of harm inherent in them. Uh, you know, the, the amputation is the harm. It's, it's why amputation is not a frontline medical treatment. It is a, an 
an option of, of last resort when other options have failed and the patient's life is in significant danger. Um, the case I'm pointing out specifically was the case of William Stoll. I believe it was decided in 2002. He ended up getting awarded an undisclosed sum of money. The thing about the case, which was interesting, is that it did not involve uh, a botch job. So obviously, you can sue with uh, with a botch botch circumcision. You can also sue if there were problems involved in the informed consent of the parents, which again is problematic because there's no proxy consent for non-therapeutic procedures, much less amputations, is not permitted according to medical ethics. But uh, th that's another nominal reason you can sue, and th there may have been some problems with that, but that's not how this case was decided. That the, the mother, the, part of the case was that the mother was under the influence of post-cesarean painkillers uh, when she agreed to the circumcision. But it wasn't decided on that. It was decided uh, based on the fact that the circumcision itself had harmed uh, Mr. Stoll, William Stoll. Stoll's lawsuit is the, uh, I'm reading from an article on serp.org. CIRP.org. Uh, Stoll's lawsuit is the first time a young man upon turning 18 has decided to sue his circumciser, remarks Llewellyn. This landmark case raises questions of whether a parent can give consent at all for a surgery that is merely cosmetic in nature, and whether a physician should be permitted to perform a non-therapeutic operation on a minor. Unquote. Says Llewellyn, I would like to see the day arrive when hospitals no longer do routine circumcisions and little boys are left alone to develop the way nature intended, unquote. Oh, I, I had to insert this in. I'm reading from uh, avoiceformen.com. Um, I, I assume this was, this was prior to, or around the start of the... Um, William Stoll lawsuit. Stoll, who upon turning 18 in December of last year, filed a lawsuit in New York for damages in excess of $75,000 against Frank P. Cariello, the obstetrician who circumcised him, and against Good Samaritan Hospital in West Islip, New York, where the procedure took place. Stoll is not suing for medical malpractice. Uh, no one claims that the physician negligently performed the circumcision. The suit is for battery, defined as an, quote, offensive touching, unquote, under the law, for performing the procedure that was not medically necessary, and for fraud, claiming that the surgery was done without proper consent. Stoll's mother signed the consent form, but she says she did so while under the influence of Demerol and other drugs administered to help ease her pain after delivering her son by cesarean section. Uh, and apparently the ruling focused a good bit on the the battery aspect of the case. So this is this is some some information on the current legal status of circumcision, and hopefully, as uh, the w the wheels continue coming off the circumcision bandwagon, uh, more people begin suing uh, and winning, and maybe we can get sympathetic people uh, in prosecutors' offices to start bringing up cases. I mean, the the circumcision rate is fifty percent and trending downward. Uh, is below 50% and trending downward every year. Um, it's the, the circumcision rate is collapsing. It's over. We know it's over. It's only a matter of time. And uh, you know, you imagine somebody from this generation or from coming generations growing up, becoming a judge, becoming a lawyer in a position to rule on cases or fight cases like this. You can imagine things will go our way even if if the the letter of the law does not necessarily change. So that is my take on the current situation. Feel free to comment.